St. Catharines and myself, Kathy Piper, the cast and crew of tonight's show, we would like to welcome you to Monsignor Schnacky Community Players' final production this season, Dirty Work at the Crossroads. This audience tonight is our fifth performance and, it's, and we have played to 1,000 people. Hey. And that's in little downtown Mendes. That's really good. Um, there are a few business things. There's no smoking during the show. We have two exits, fire exits in the back of the hall and one to my left. About seven years ago, Monsignor Schnecke came to us and said, we have a place, let's put on a play. Well, it seemed like a pretty good idea, and you can see as you look around you, we've really grown from that first year. Things have changed within our group, and the good Lord found it in his infinite wisdom to pass us from one set of loving hands to another. On behalf of myself and the cast and crew of tonight's show, we would like to thank Father Latus, Deacon John, and Sister Alice for their loving support for our whole show.
be quite popular with the uh, country rustics, eh, Mookie? Oh, sir, I figure she could be engaged uh, twice over, sir. But mighty particular gal is our Miss Nellie. I, I reckon she doesn't have eyes from anybody except Adam Oakheart. <laughs> Be the fellow, sir, and a mighty handy man he is around the livery stable, sir. No horsing around with him, sir. <laughs> he loves Miss Nellie? Oh, ever since they were children, sir, they grew up together hand in hand, and he's as brave as she is lovely. <laughs> Are they, oh, cursed word, engaged? Oh, you bet your sweet easel they are, sir. Hard and fast, sir. Hard and fast. As solid as the, well, maybe more solid than the roots on the stump there, sir. And uh, there's to be a wedding? Oh, when the golden rod comes to bloom in September, sir. That's, that's Miss Nellie's favorite, favorite policy, sir. I can't say the word without... Well, <laughs> So, the beautiful Nellie Lovelace would wed the humble blacksmith's son. Never! Little does she know my purpose. <laughs> Ever since you came here this summer, sir, and took up lodging in her mother's house, I don't think Miss Nellie has given Mr. Oakhart quite the thoughts that she used to, sir. Maybe she's caught up with your fast city ways, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but come September, when you return to Bridgeport, sir. And I shall return to Bridgeport, Master Mookie. Ah, good for you, Mr. Murgatroyd. But not alone. No, not alone. Nellie shall be mine. I vow it. <laughs> I wish to sit on yonder bank and contemplate the rolling river. Ah, how I glory in the majesty of nature. <laughs> Three 
Queen Oaks Asylum, pretending I was insane? Come, come, Ida. Let bygones be bygones. <laughs> There's work enough here for both of us. Dirty work, I warrant. It's the only kind you ever had a hand in. You shall judge for yourself. Look around you, Ida. Look all around you. Is this not a beautiful farm? <laughs> Say, 
actually carrying packages the same. I thought I'd have my tea out here. It's such a smiling day. Won't you join me? Well, thank you. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Now's my chance. A few drops from this vial and her tea and... Have you seen my Nelly? Why, no, I've been occupied with my painting all afternoon. She said she was going down the livery stable. Say, I do wish she wouldn't spend so much time down there. She comes home with such an air. But say, she's a girl, and in love with Adam O'Cart, a fine, handsome lad. He is, too. Uh, Mrs. Lovelace, um, I have a confession to make. A confession? Say, we like it so key. How many lumps? Uh, seven. One, two, three, four. How many months you been born with us now, Mr. Murgatroyd? Um, two. Two, three, four, five, six. How much longer are you calculating on staying? Just one. One. Two, three, four, five, six, and one next seven. There you are. I hope it's sweet enough. There's cream in the pitcher. <coughs> uh, there's only one thing sweeter, Mrs. Lovelace. What's that? Uh, your daughter, Nellie. I love her. <laughs> and wiser in the ways of the world, but well, I am tired of these town-bred beauties with their faded cheeks and their artificial bloom. Uh, think what this fresh, innocent girl would make of me. No, no, say no more. Nearly's not for the likes of you. Nearly's promised to Adam O'Card. Now, Mrs. Lovelace, uh, you may think this but the passing fancy of a summer boarder, but I assure you, I love your daughter Nellie, and she loves me. No, no, tis false. Nellie's true to Adam. Not so. Why, she has written me letters. Letters? Letters declaring her love. Show me one. Curses, I have no letters. <laughs> shown the slightest romantic interest in me. I have one in my bureau. I will show it to you later. One may easily be forged. <laughs> Sir, I do not like this at all. I am a poor, ignorant woman, but I am not so ignorant that I don't know who I am and what you are. Explain yourself, madam. Only this, sir. I have given you the advantage of my home, and you have taken advantage of my little Nellie. And now, sir, I must ask you to make other living arrangements. Your presence here is no longer wanted. <laughs> there, there, good mother. Perhaps we've gotten ourselves a little overexcited. Won't you drink your tea? Yes, thank you. The shock of this news has made me faint. Why, he 
He's nothing like Mr. Murgatroyd. There's a fine gentleman for you. He even went to college. Adam Opart isn't fit to block his fool. <laughs> Good day, Miss Nellie, or may I say, dear Miss Nellie. Good afternoon, Mr. Murgatroyd, and you may say anything you like. <laughs> what lovely posies. May I have one? Of course. From your tender hand, would you place it here? It's only a daisy. Only a daisy? A pure, white, fresh daisy in the clear, clean bloom of spring. How refreshing you are. How pretty you phrase things. I grow so tired of, of other people and their coarse ways. Let me tell you of Bridgeport, Nellie. Bridgeport, the big city? Oh, how I'd love to live there. And you shall, with me. You have only to say the word. Sir, I know I'm only a country girl, unused to city ways. But that does not permit you to insult me. Insult you? Why, no, Nelly, you misunderstand me if you think that. Why, I have always loved you from that first morning when I saw you swinging on the barnyard gate, calling the pig. Have I loved you? And from that first idle hour when you and I walked hand in hand together through the hayloft, collecting eggs. Have I loved you? And now, I beg you, I throw myself at your feet, I ask you, I plead with you to be my bride. No, no, that can never be. I love another, have from tenderest infancy been promised to Adam Oakhart. <laughs> Adam Oakhart, he does not love you. How dare you? Forgive me for sullying your ears with this, Nelly, but uh, have you ever heard of the notorious Ida Rindle? Ida Reingold, the famous college widow? None other. Why do you mention her by her name to me? She is an old flame of Adam's. He met her once on a trip to New Haven. Adam falls to me? I cannot believe it. Then believe <laughs> your own eyes. Adam approaches. He is walking with that strange woman. He is assisting her up the garden path. Tell me, Mr. Murgatroyd, is that the notorious Ida Rindle? None other. He takes her arm. He smiles at her tenderly. Oh, Adam! Adam! Oh, my Adam! There, there, Nellie. You are distraught. You must be brave. You must not let him see you weeping. You are right, Monroe. Thank you for your counsel. Adam O'Kite shall never see me weeping. <laughs> Nellie, wait. The game is mine. <laughs> Why, you're right, Marm. I should 
the smoke so hasty. But wait, we can easily remedy that. You shall see my egg ball. Oh, no, Marm. Then you can decide which is most beautiful. Oh, uh, no, no, that won't be necessary. <laughs> come, come, not afraid. Afraid of a pretty woman's ankle? Or shall I say a woman's pretty ankle? If he looks, he is not the man I saw him. Yeah. 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 Character, my dear Ida, is a 
gentleman's stock in trade. You have spent all yours, and I never had any. <laughs> now, I will send her to you. Do your work well, and diamond shall be yours. <laughs> I'll do my work well, but not for the love of you, Monroe Murgatroyd. clouds they are. I shall get her to write one line to Murgatroyd, and then, then the reward! Dresses and gold and diamonds are precious in my eyes! Oh, how they set my gypsy blood aglow! <laughs> but revenge! Oh, revenge for the world's wrongdoings is sweet, sweeter than diamonds. She shall leave her home, and then the public exposure and the shame, the shame that I have known and all Ida Rheingold's doings, all her doings, all her doings! What? You here and alone? We're in Adam. Oh, he fled after basely insulting me. Insulted you? How? Well, he asked me to be his wife. I do not believe you. What matter? I refused his rude advances. Adam loves me. Or did so once. You're a stupid fool. Did I not see you walking with Monroe Murgatroyd? You know him? Only by reputation. And what a reputation. <laughs> 99 and 44, one hundredths percent bad. <laughs> What a fortunate girl you are. Fortunate? Why, to have Monroe Murgatroyd at your feet. Think of what he presents. A life of brilliance. Traveling about from place to place. Plenty of dresses. Gold. Diamonds. What a fool she is to believe all of this. You think I should accept his offer? Accompany him to Bridgeport. By all means. But it would break my poor mother's heart. And Adam, what about Adam? Adam? What life does Adam offer? A home and a livery stable? Toiling from morning till night. Rags, wretchedness, without one ray of hope to lighten the gloom. Don't so talk like that! Don't believe her. You must be mad to lose this opportunity. Why not write one line to Murgatroyd to say you'll go with him? I can't! I can't! Have you no spirit? Have you no pride? Is it pity you feel for Adam Ocar? Pity! When you saw him with your own two eyes, ogling me? You are right! I will go to Bridgeport! Good! Write Murgatroyd a note now. But why write? He is close by. Uh, well, because no well-bred Bridgeport lady accepts a gentleman's propositions verbally. No? Very well, then. Where is pen and paper? Ah, I have it in my reticule. I have always found that it pays to get a gentleman's proposals in writing. I also have an envelope and a pen. A lady should always be prepared. How should I begin? Dear Mr. Murgatroyd? Oh, no. How about Dearest Monroe? But that's so familiar. And what could be more familiar than going with Amanda Bridgeport? Dearest Monroe, I am doing wrongly, very wrongly, but I trust to your honor and the love you say you bear me. I will fly, but take me away tonight so that I may never look upon the faces here again. I trust to you. Do not let me trust in vain. Nellie. He will marry me, won't he? Oh, he's a gentleman, and he will keep his word. <laughs> Stay then, and sign the envelope. <laughs> there. That is done. <laughs> so far, so well. I'll take care of this. Excuse me, mister. Oh. You, come here. Uh. You will take this message uh. and deliver it to Mr. Murgatroyd. You'll find him yonder with the pigs. Uh. But the pigs don't mean, lady. No, no, no. And don't let anyone see you deliver it. And wait. Here's 
they died for you. Take it, take it. Um, uh, no. Should I miss Billy? As you wish. Only I really Good have... courage, dear. Good courage. It will be all right. Uh, what does she want? To die? Oh. <laughs> it will be all right. Keep a stiff upper lip. Come with me. I'll help you pack. Ah, oh, now something's up. Ladies don't give gentlemen a dime unless something's up. I know that for a fact. I've seen him do this at the post office. <laughs> Why, it's coming out. Good thing I had onions for supper. <laughs> ah. Oh, murder! Oh, what, what were you doing there, Mookie? Oh, no, 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 Deacon John and Ace, I can't tell a lie, but it's, it's a letter here for, for... Mr. Murgatroyd, uh, who from? Uh, I cannot stand this any longer. I must see Nellie and explain. Uh, oh, even Marm. Uh, oh, Adam, that letter, tell me what it is. Mookie can't read and I have it my spare. Well, of course, Marm. Let me see the letter, Mookie. Nellie's handwriting. Nellie's writing to Mr. Murgatroyd. Then what he said was true. What did he say, Marm? He said, he said, better read the letter, Adam. I grow faint. Oh, I see it all now. Nellie's sending love notes. Oh, what a fool I've been. What does it mean? Good girls, good girls don't write letters to summer boarders. I don't know what it means. Nellie, Nellie, come here. Oh, no, Miss Nellie, I'm all my fault. Yes, Mother? Nellie, that letter from you, Mr. Murgatroyd, what does it mean? Oh, Mom. Then what he said was true? Answer me, child. Answer me. It is true. My heart. My heart. Mother! Stay away. <laughs> I will not have your hands touching me. But you're ill. Mookie will help me. Even though he be no kin of mine, he is loyal and honest and good. <laughs> Can you say as much? Look me in the eye and say as much. Oh, Mother! Better read the letter, Adam. Tis better than I expected. <laughs> the mother dying and the girl shamed before the world. It is not mine to read. Read the letter, Adam. I will know the truth before I die. <laughs> and dear, and dear Mr. Murgatroyd, you have asked me to go away from home. I own. I've been dazzled by the thought of a grander home than I could ever hope for in Bridgeport. <laughs> but if I go, I will break two hearts that love me better than life. I have been wavering, but I am strong now, all the stronger for temptations. My decision is irrevocable. I will not leave my happy home. Nelly! Father! I die content.
I will see you sure. Give him more insides. Yeah. Go and see. We have an egg in the house. And now, with the new sign up, a border man pro jump at any time. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Poor Miss Nellie. Ever since her ma died so sudden last spring, and, and Mr. Oakhart left town so hasty like, well, she ain't been herself. Grieving her pretty little heart away ever since I failed to deliver that doggone letter. Then Mr. Murgatroyd, he ups and leaves right quick like, right after she repulsed him. Now she's living here all by herself. Saving me, of course, trying to keep her body and shoe soles together. Why that poor little gal won't even go dancing no more? How oh, she used to love that square dance. She's a kid by the <laughs> don't, don't. Yes, I 
do believe in this part of the world you have that unearthly meal known as supper? Well, I suppose when one is in Rome, one must do as the Romans and fiddle while it burns. Follow me, ma'am. <coughs> Come, Leone. Clarence, use the servant's entrance. No, mamma. I refuse to enter such a vulgar hostel. Miss, you will obey me or I will cut you off without a penny. I'll run away. I promise you, mamma. I'll run away. Run away, to be sure. And where would you run to? I promise without your fortune, this so-called sweetheart of yours would not look at you twice. No, miss, you will obey me. And from this point on, I will not even hear mention the name of Monroe Metroid. <laughs> Look. But no, I have not seen him before. Uh, I am sure of it. Uh, 
Mookie, we must have some eggs for supper. Miss Dolly, we had an egg. A number of eggs. Here is a dollar. Thank heavens, Mrs. Astorville paid her rent in advance. Go into the village and purchase the necessary provender. Why the whole dollar? I ain't seen so much money in a month on Mondays. <laughs> Spend it wisely, Mookie. Yeah. It must buy us all food for a week. For the rest of the money I must put by for the mortgage. Uh, oh. uh, Miss Nelly, why don't you take that offer from the railroad company? They want powerful bed, you know, to buy this property so they could put a bridge over the river there. No, it was my mother's last abode. I shall never leave it. By willful behavior, I caused her death. Right. Now she lies buried in yonder pasture. No. I shall never leave her last resting place. Well, I mean, no, I mean, no, Miss Nelly. Go now, Milky, and return. We'll talk no more of selling out to the railroad. Okay. So, so. <laughs> if Adam would only return. Yeah. Oh, God, turn back my stage of life beyond that accursed day. She blames herself, pining away over her lost love. Now listen up. Adam O'Carp left town, and some say he took to drinking hard liquor just to forget it. <laughs> now, Mr. McCossick and Mr. McHugh were down in New Haven last week, and they saw Adam so drunk he couldn't even stand up while he was stumbling from pillar to post, and he had to keep his head up so people could see it. Shame because he was a nice young fella, too. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I gotta go buy me some eggs. Yeah. 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 Wait a minute, why should I go buy eggs when old Frank Perdue has got a hen house down yeah. his yeah. as big as all outdoors? <laughs> Miss Nelly said, Mookie, you spent that money wisely. What could be better? What could be wiser than not spending it at all? <laughs> and some people think old Mook don't have both oars in the water. <laughs> Well, 
Do you mean to say, Ida, that you could obtain her mother's consent to our union? I do. But what's in it for me? And figure it in thousands. They're much easier to count. Why, well, I, I don't believe that you could, but uh, if you could... <laughs> Suppose on the morning of your marriage, you promise me a cool 5,000, and then on goes my patent. Peculiar, particular screw. <laughs> Done. But, but what is your patent peculiar screw? Never mind. That's my business. I'll not have you poaching on my preserves. Is it agreed? Agreed? Here's my hand on it. It's a bargain. I uh, can't imagine what your hold on Mrs. Astorville is, but apparently you have a hold. <laughs> a hold? A grip! Man alive, a grip! her openly. No further need of this. <laughs> but wait, not yet. I have need of a certain photograph. I have it in my rooms. I shall return shortly. All right. Uh, I've asked Leone to join me at the crossroads. Meet us there. And beware, Monroe Murgatroyd, how you play me false. I'm no longer the innocent girl that you pretended to marry before a false clergyman. I'm no longer the sweet innocent girl that was before you entered my life. Oh, no, Monroe Murgatroyd, do not think that you can play any tricks on me. Yeah. 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 I would turn you over to the police so fast. Oh, yeah. And I believe I will once the 5,000 is mine. Badly, but once Leone Astorville is mine, let her try and collect the five thousand. <laughs> Monroe Murgatroyd! Oh, horrors! Discovered! What do you mean? <laughs> Why, Nellie, uh, I was but passing by and uh, thought I'd stop and pay my respects. Re the only respect you know is for your boon companions, the Hans and Serpents. Be off, you wrecker of happy homes. Nellie, you are a cruel love. Is there no forgiveness for me in those relentless eyes? No light but that of hate and bitter enmity? No pity for me in your heart? Forgive you? I'd sooner see you dead at my feet. Perhaps not in years, but I have lived. 
I have drunk life to its bitterest dregs. And you seem so young, pretty too. Why should you be so unhappy? You have a kind mother who lives and who gives you everything you could want. Her loving care, more books than you can read. <sighs> My, what a size! Yeah, I have everything I could wish but one thing. You don't mean. I believe you do mean. A sweetheart. How did you know? It is written in your dancing eyes. Yes, I am in love. Deeply, passionately, constantly. Won't you tell me about him? While well, coming down from Bangor on the eastern train, after weeks of hunting in the woods of Maine, quite extensive whiskers, who light mustache as well, sits a handsome stranger, tall and fair and swell. Empty seat beside him, no one at his side, as into a pleasant station the eastern train doth glide. Enter aged couple, take the hindmost seat. Enter lovely maiden, bewitching and petite. <laughs> Blushingly she murmurs, is the seat engaged? See the elder couple, properly enraged. Stranger, quite delighted, sees her ticket through. Thinks of him the tunnel, and knows what he will do. So they sit and chatter as the cinders fly, until the handsome stranger gets one in the eye. Maiden, sympathetic, turns her quick about, and says, Sir, if you please, may I try and take it out? Soon the handsome stranger feels her tender touch, and hears her softly murmur, Does it hurt you much? Whiz, bang, boom, into the tunnel quite. All is glorious darkness, as black as Egypt's night. Out into the daylight glides the eastern train. Stranger's hair is ruffled, just the slightest grain. Maiden is all blushes. And there, next appeared, a tiny little earring caught in the stranger's beard. <gasps> Yeah. 
find your passenger. Oh, she's safe then. I feared for a moment she may have gone to seek a rendezvous. Mrs. Astrobel, may I speak with you? I am all attention. I have just learned the name of the man your daughter loves. He will bring nothing but shame and sorrow to your heart, as only I can know. Monroe Murgatroyd? None other. Are you aware of his real character? No, except that I have made a few inquiries and found that he's not one of the Boston Murgatroyds. What do you know of him? Alas, that is a sad story, and too long to tell. That I do know him well is enough. Oh, man, don't let him repeat to your daughter what he used to beguile the child of another. I have already forbidden them to meet. Do you love your daughter? Leone? I adore her. I do not know what I should do if she were to bring disgrace to our name. Then I must warn you, even now they are planning a meeting. He's here? My own Murgatroyd? Right? I have seen him lurking about the house. But this is your security. He is nothing but a fortune hunter. Once it is made clear that if Leone marries without your consent, she is penniless, you will be safe. You are right. I will see this, Cat. I shall tell him if he takes Leone away, I will disinherit and discard her, renounce her forever as my child. Do that and all will be well. I shall send Leone to you. Be steadfast in your resolution. He is a cunning villain. Beware. Oh, beware. <laughs> How shall I reason with Leone? Alas, she has a mind of her own. And yet, he cannot escape even her heart. After one trip on the train? Perhaps a further change of scene will break the fetters of first love. <coughs> yes, yeah, I shall take her to the capitals of Europe. I shall speak to the weather-beaten old dragon at once. <laughs> ah, there, this is Hudson Astorville. You here, Murgatroyd? You presume to follow us, I see. I thought I made it quite clear your attentions were unwelcome. Curse her cold-bloodedness. Madam, I love your daughter Leone, and the impulse of my passion must plead my excuse. You have me. Mr. Murgatroyd, I value highly my family's position. The Upton Aftermill name is an old and respected one. We are looked up to by those who are themselves about blemish and shade. But I tell you, I would sooner see myself trodden down in the worst shade, and my name blackened beyond reaction, than see my daughter, your wife. Yeah. 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 And mark me well, if she is mad enough to flee with you without my consent, I will utterly cast her from me and never look upon her face again. Yay! I'm here, ready to collect them. Ready to collect the 5,000. So, sir, I hope that... Who's that woman? Perhaps you should present me to your friend. Uh, Mrs. Astorville, present me, allow me to present an old friend of mine, Miss Ida Rheingold. Then it is she, my only enemy. Oh, how I hate to see her wear that smile bright with a serpent's glitter. <laughs> this impertinence passes endurance. Not only do you follow me to this rural retreat, but you presume to impose your disreputable friends upon me as well. Not so fast, Mrs. Upson Astorbelt. Not so fast. For a disreputable friend, I've certainly been seen with some highly reputable people. Oh, oh no, no, not that. Mr. Murgatroyd, would you be kind enough to leave us alone for a few moments? Thank you. Yeah, a little surprised, eh? A little taken back? I'd hope never to see your face again. I thought you were still at Green Oaks. I was incarcerated there under false circumstances. Can you say the same? What do you want of me? Or is this all a hideous dream? You must not remain here. Go, I will pay you anything. I will make any sacrifice to be rid of your hateful presence. What is your price? My price? Yes, you can have no other object than blackmail. Destroy that picture. I should go more again from memory than if I first before me. Oh, yes. 
Memories of the lunatic asylum. Memories of the padded cell. What would not your fine social world give to know that the famous Mrs. Upson Asterville is nothing more than a dipsomaniac? Silence! I've been cured! Completely cured! Nevertheless, you were confined to Green Oaks Asylum, as this photograph taken there proves. Confined there for several years. Well, the Fifth Avenue crowd believed you to be on an extended world tour. Enough! Say no more! What is your price? Name it and go! Well, there is my old pal, Monroe Murgatroyd Esquire. He's standing under that tree, yonder. He shall have your daughter. Never, never, I defy you, Ida Rheingold. Marry my child to such a scoundrel, never. Ha! Then I have but one alternative, to proclaim your moral weakness to the world. No, no, I will not let her be sacrificed. Do your worst, I will not. I have only to show this photograph to the New York world. Then the entire universe... No! Any price but my daughter's happiness. And why should she go through this life upright and unashamed when I alone unjustly have suffered the tortures of the fallen? No, that is my price. Your consent to your daughter's marriage. Never, never. All of you, near and far, come in here. No, no. come in here. Oh, shame, oh, degradation. Oh.
It's something about the farmer's life. I would like to ask of you. Why, sure, you just fire away there, honey. What did you say your name was? The poor T.T.? <laughs> With the chicken, she go pluck, pluck, pluck. Does one say she is sitting or setting? Uh, Ma'am Jones, don't make no difference when the chicken go pluck, pluck, whether she's sitting or she's setting. What I want to know, is she laying or is she lying? <laughs> Shut, ma'am. No, no, no. Shut the door. Shut the door. I'm telling you, don't go door shut. No, no, no. You do not. Uh, wow, I understand that in any language. Boy, you French made sure a lot of kiss. I ain't heard a smack like that since old Best Puller snoot out of the mud. <laughs>
torment Leone further? Get the dog for Potter! Oh, I'll do that, Miss Nelly. I really will. But tell me, don't you ever think about that young fellow you were going to marry come golden right time? <laughs> Adam Oakhart? Yes. I think of him often. Often, Mookie. Whenever I pass the delivery stable. Well, it's golden right time right now, Miss Nelly. Right now! What was that? I think I heard a chicken sneeze. <laughs> Oh, God bless you, Miss Nelly. There is a strange foreboding in the air tonight. I have a feeling that all is not well. Oh. She's gone. All oh, gone. And with her going with the sun and the moon and the stars. All is black now. The night is deep and dark. Where is my father? Where is my father? Get up. What? Well, they never had enough. Well, I know that, but I'll tell you why. I got a little jug of cider on the bar. Now, it's not hard, but it's getting a little stiff. Now, that'll just go <laughs> Good, kind, generous movie. Here, yeah, well, come with me, sir. Come on, follow me. Follow you? Of course I'll follow you. But wait. Wait till the sun shines, Nelly. <laughs> when the clouds go drifting by, we will... Be happy, Nelly. Don't you sigh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my old friend Bob. No. No. No, no, no. 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 Most extraordinary, the quantity of liquor I can drink without its affecting me in the <laughs> slightest. Now, I know some folks who can't take half as much without it affecting their, their balance. Boy, this is the worst paved street in New Haven, bar none. Who said bar? Did I hear bar? Where are you, Mookie? Good, kind, generous, loving friend, Pookie! Those men, whoever they are, are gone. I'm alone. I knew it must come to this at last. I can no longer bear my remorse and despair. Bear it! My friend! My plan to blackmail Mrs. Astorville has been foiled, and I refuse to be dependent upon the whims of Monroe Murgatroyd. Better the wide, rolling river than that! Better the river! Oh, placid waters, how many dark crimes have you hidden? Go get them! Life seems to swoop before me as if a dream. Why did I harm those innocent girls? Sweet Nelly Lovelace, she never did me any harm. No. Frivolous Leone Astorville, as gay as she is lovely. And I, really? miserable wretch that I am, yeah. have, yeah. Have, yeah. have only yeah. hatred and jealousy in a heart as black and violet as a river bottom. Of me, a crumb so low I dare not. 
be bygone. Push her in the river. Lost the head! Thank you for those generous words. I need all the forgiveness I can gather. You weren't thinking of the river. Oh, what else is there for me? Are you indeed a fallen creature? Then you have the greatest claim upon my compassion, for he that lifts a fellow fallen creature from the dust is greater than the hero who conquers the world. Merciful heaven! My mother's dying words! I too will be saved. Come, let us go together. Let us go forth and find peace in the soft, sweet solace of religion. <laughs> Yes. Oh. Oh. Billy, this has gone far enough. 
no longer the young and foolish girl who is dazzled by your perfidy. You played upon my folly, never upon my love. Fortunately, I found it out. Too late, alas, for my own peace of mind. Monroe, you have done your worst. Leave me. Done my worst? Little does she know me if she thinks that. Why, even now, your beloved son of a blacksmith lies rotting in the cell. Thanks to your false testimony. His case remains to be tried. I am a witness and may prove an awkward witness, too. No matter what you say, I will not believe it. But you are not the judge and jury, and there is but little romance in the breast of a Yankee juryman. He looks only to the facts, and the fact is I saw Adam slay Ida Rheingold. Ooh. My evidence will convict him even as it has caused his arrest. But you will not give it. Say that you will not. His life is in your hands. How can I save him? What can I do? What can I do? Shall I tell you, Nellie? I have always loved you. Let us fly away together to another land where in our love unbroken we shall forget the wretched Adam. No, never! I love him better now though he suffers for a crime which I feel he did not commit than when he were free to go where he would. His happiness I am not fit to have, but his fate I will share. Yeah. I alone can save him. The fate you would share rests in my hands. No, in a higher power than man. Oh. Yeah. Listen to me. Stand off. My place is by his side and not by yours. Do your worst. Do your worst. And what that is, I know too well. Rash girl. What would you do? Save him. I know not how, but I will save him. Were he nothing in the world to me, I would do as much for him, now that I know you hate him, as I loathe you. Why, man, it brings a blush of shame to my cheek. I think that ever have I loved such a villain. Yeah. Yeah. My words, Nelly Lovelace, but you shall live to repent them. Stand <laughs> off! Do not approach me! You are young. You are alone. <laughs>
train until the six o'clock express. How strange it all seems. Once, my happy childhood home, now a railroad crossing and signal station. How kind it was of the New York, New Haven, and Hartford in my hour of distress to give me a position as crossing watchwoman. Who says corporations are heartless?
church is abandoned. Then, when all is calm, he can make his escape to Canada. You mean you want me to pretend he jumped off the train? Yes, <laughs> yes, good boogie. They will never find him, and you will not be blamed. Say yes, Mookie. Say yes. yes. Who are you? Why do you shrink from me? 
like all the rest. My wrong murder choice! Oh. 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 Are you so timid that the sight of a poor, starved, footsore fellow creature frightens you? Yes! What is there to fear from me? Everything! Nelly Lovelace! Nelly Oakhart! I am Adam Oakhart's wife! What evil chance has brought you here? Still the same proud Nelly. And yet, your circumstances seem strangely altered. Your garden of goldenrod, now a railroad crossing. <laughs> your beautiful cottage, a signal station. I have remained faithful, Monroe. Can you say as much? No. So, my rival still holds your affections? You still love the vile murderer? Oh, no. Murderer no more. I have here the full confession of the
we shall retire into the house there to watch from yonder window. No, 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 no. Yes, that. Come, come. No. Bill and Bio, villain, is it no power on earth to stay your purpose? Has heaven forgot the poor blacksmith's son? Come, my proud beauty, I have you in my power. Who is to say me nay? Who? Who?
woman, fair and lovely, once a girl waiting for love's first kiss, once a child mewing and cooing in my mother's arms. <laughs> Man. <laughs> he picks up the 
of his peers. <laughs> if he can, <laughs> what do you do to you? What business have you in this wretched affair? What are you doing out at nine o'clock at night? <laughs>
loved another. <laughs> My love for Leonie Astorville was but a passing whim. I never really loved her. I was half mad at the loss of you and looked elsewhere for consolation. <laughs> I am no longer the young and foolish drum was dabbled by your perfidy. You played upon my folly, never upon my love. <coughs> Fortunately, I found it out. Too late, alas, for my own peace of mind. Monroe, you have done your worst. Leave me. <laughs> done my worst? Little does she know me if she thinks that. <laughs>
of the New York, New Haven, and Hartford in my hour of distress to give me a position as crossing watchwoman. <laughs> Who said corporations are heartless? <laughs> 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 All my inheritance suspended and suspended without result. He could not break through the horrible evidence of that villain, my no, I will not even think his wretched name. At least Dad and I were married by the chaplain in the prison. I have this child to comfort me, sweet little Nell. Aww. Little Nelly, little Nelly, come to mama, dear.
mean you want me to pretend that if he jumped off the train? Yes, <laughs> yes, good Mookie. They will never find him, and you will not be blamed. Say yes, Mookie. Say yes. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 